in studio with the Hall of Fame of Matt Miller, New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, and uh, Damon Wright from the Berkeley County Board of Education. Damon, good morning to you. Good morning. Come a little closer to your microphone, if you don't mind, sir. Sure. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Uh, when is the next meeting of the BOE? Uh, we just had one on Monday, so uh, it'll be two more weeks, so I guess the 20th, I believe. About the 20th? I, yeah. Okay. 20th. And when, when is your term up, Damon? Uh, my term will be up, I believe, 2026. And who's who's up next? Up 24? next uh, will be uh, Michael Martin and Melissa uh, Power. Michael Martin, Melissa Power. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, so Melissa's was a two-year term? Hers was two years because she was filling uh, a term from the previous board since somebody left it, retired early. So she filled their, their seat. So that's why she's up again so soon. The, the Board of Education election in 22 was a pretty interesting one because you had a lot of competing uh, folks with different perspectives and point of views, which I suppose is healthy. It, it leads to some pretty good debate. Uh, but uh, as you folks have assembled, I think it's been a pretty non-dramatic Board of Education. So you folks must be getting along. We get along. But, we, but like you said, we, we all have very varying points of view, which is one of the reasons why some of our meetings last so long, <laughs> uh, yeah. because uh, like you know, some of them last three hours or more. Mm -hmm. So it's just because we're just trying to hash out our differences and come to some type of consensus that leads to the best outcome for students. Well, when, when Pat Murphy is your president and he's the lead contrarian, then you're, you're going to have some debate, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. Uh, what, what do you think are, are some of the major issues that there is, uh, I, I wouldn't call it contentious, but there's debate about within the board? Uh, some of it is debate about even just filling positions um, mm -hmm. because we don't want... What kind of positions? Uh, I guess uh, board office positions. Okay. Um, not really classroom positions because <laughs> those are desperately needed it's just because the school system is so large we're the second largest school system in, in the in the state so but we need administrative staff but how how much staff do we need so the administration says we need this position so we're like wait a minute do you really need it is there any way we can distribute this you know we so we go back and forth so it's it's not really as much contention between ourselves the board and between each other sometimes it's between the administration just because we aren't in the day-to-day uh, -day like mm -hmm. the administration is, so we have to try to push back and to ask questions to make sure that we're making the best decisions because it's, it's financial decisions. Um, and in, sometimes it's perception because people think, oh, well, there's so many people. Yeah, but you got to understand that people always want to compare public schools to business. Well, if, it's a, if you want to do that, then as a business, you would have administrators that would be over large sums of money we have you know our finance sometimes about millions of dollars and do you want somebody that's has the skills to do that well sometimes you have to pay for that i mean you, you don't want somebody in there that doesn't know what they're doing and get in trouble with the law or loses money or bezels money whatever it's going on you want to have checks and balances in there so and we've, we've heard of high profile embezzlement cases uh fairly recently, fairly recently. <laughs> yes. yeah uh you know administration is an interesting word because uh in Berkeley County, and, and I imagine in other counties too, not just Berkeley, but that word becomes a buzzword for cutting costs. So it's too many administrators, and they make way too much money. And this is one of the things I'm sure you're not immune to hearing yourself. Right. Not about you, because you're not paid really much as a Board of Education member, no. but about the admin positions. Uh, do you think, first and foremost, that there are too many administrators in the Berkeley County School System? Does the board address what's necessary and what's not necessary? Um, actually, I thought that when I first came in, uh, we did have an audit done comparing Berkeley County to the surrounding counties and even around the state. And we were close in some areas. We were barely over. In other areas, we were much less. Like our um, IT department is very small. Our H HR department is not that large. Compared to surrounding counties, um, it's it's very small. So the perception I had was just like the community had. Oh, there's too many people in here. Mm -hmm. But then when you compare it to other other areas that have similar size, um, we're a lot of cases less. We have less administrators. So that that was surprising to me. I thought we would be way above. But with the duties and everything, it's we don't have anybody just sitting around with their feet propped up on a desk waiting for something to do. So are those administrative positions – are some mandated by the state and are some mandated by the federal government in regards to the work that must be done 
to continue to get federal money? Um, I believe some some gives like we have a, a director of federal programs. Um, we have to have a treasurer, which does not um, doesn't come from the state. That comes from the general budget. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these administrative positions they they come out of the general budget. They they're not a part of the state aid formula, which is a problem because it, then of course it has to come out of the general budget. But they are needed positions. You you need a treasurer. You need other treasurers in there to you know audit and take make sure that everything is being taken care of. You need a director of federal programs because that's a huge thing to make sure you're in compliance. Make sure you don't miss any dates. So. There are varying positions that are needed if you're going to be getting federal or state dollars. So, it, it's it's necessary to have them. So, are there any positions that are unfilled right now in administration in Berkeley County um, that you're aware of? There was we had just we had the um, so Dan Comer's position, which was a safety position. We just uh, the last board meeting filled that one. Um, there's probably a couple others in the like I said, the administration wants like a previous board meeting they wanted to fill. Um, wanted to add another director. And we, as the board said, no. <laughs> Why did you, know, you say no? We said no just because we felt that um, it's, there were already enough in, in that role and that the others in that position could possibly fill that. It's, it's one way to save money. It's also, like I said, perception because you, well, there's just another director, another, you're just adding, making positions just to give somebody something. Well, we wanted to make sure that the work is still going to get done. Uh, by those people and you know it's like in any job you want to be able to move up and you want to be able to make more but when you're in public uh, education or public schools you've got to balance that with okay what's that cost going to be mm -hmm. and can it still be done at a lower level so we pushed back and said no and is that the final word then if the BOA says no is that it yes um, I mean they can bring it back up or maybe um, it would maybe a, we there might be another coordinator position or something like that uh, at a lower level that can that we may feel but at this time we did not feel that there was a need for a director now that may change in the future with the growth of the county uh, that may be needed did you vote no yes in that situation yes was that a unanimous vote i don't D remember to it probably was if it wasn't unanimous it was four to one or something like that but it was i'm pretty sure it was either unanimous or, or maybe one person said no but yeah matt miller are there certain requirements as far as directors or overseeing curriculums or you know truancies or certain things based on the number of students in other words being the second largest system in the state does that automatically mean we're going to have so many directors no no, no. there's because it's like i said it's, a lot of these positions aren't part of the state aid formula so there's okay. no state requirement it's just you know you need them just like you said because of the large amount mm -hmm. um we just had a meeting the other um last well the community had an opportunity last night at muscleman to learn more about berkeley county schools and one thing that was brought out was for example we have over three thousand special needs students well if you take just the special needs students out of berkeley county it would be towards the middle of um attendance or um student population in for many counties it would it dwarfs many counties student populations so that's just our special needs so this, which is a huge challenge we hear a lot about parental involvement you just mentioned a meeting last night folks could learn more what type of involvement was there from the community uh very little to none hmm. <laughs> but there will be other opportunities um mm -hmm. uh, you can follow go on the berkeley county schools website and there's going to be one uh, in the martinsburg area there's going to be another one uh, in the Spring Mills area, and I think another one in the Hedgesville area. So, so it's going to have, be about four of them throughout the year, all opportunities to learn about the different departments, what they do, who they serve, and people can ask questions. Is that something that the board kind of laid out and said, we want to do this to try to create and help to generate more involvement? Uh, that was part of the goals that we set for the superintendent. We wanted to, um, we felt that it was good, an, out, an outreach. Um, people always want to be heard, want an opportunity to be heard. So we said, as part of your goals, this is what you're going to do. We want these community outreach so the community can come and they can meet with you, meet with department heads if, if they're able to be, be there and just ask questions. But, you know, they can always ask, now several ask questions before the meeting uh, and they got those answered before. But if others showed up, they could, he was going to share those as well. There has to be some frustration when people want to have their say, we see it all the time on social media, <laughs> you say, okay, here's an opportunity to have your say, and there's crickets. <laughs> right, exactly. So it, it is a little a little frustrating, but 
I mean, all we can do is continue to mm -hmm. provide the opportunity. Um, and like I said, there's going to be more. I'm going to make sure that we try to be very proactive and making sure that it's, mm -hmm. it's, it was sent out to, to all the all the parents. So and that'll continue to be done. But as, as a board, we're going to make sure we also try to push for that as well so people can be involved. Do you take some of that as, the, you know, if parents are not coming, that they may be satisfied, that, that they're okay with how things are going? Um, it would be, well, if I go based off social media, then no. It, uh, but I, th I think most parents are okay with what's going on. I mean, of course, they would like it to be better. Mm -hmm. um, but they know that the teachers and staff are doing the best that they can with the position that they, they're in and with the population that we have. I mean, it's... it's it's hard to manage a lot of students with uh, so many permanent subs and only, I mean, we have the largest amount of certified teachers in the state, nationally certified teachers in the state, but we still have a, we also have the largest amount of permanent subs. So that's a challenge as well. So the community knows that the staff is working as hard as they can. Um, of course, you have those online that will always have something negative to say, but won't come forward and volunteer. They won't, you know, bring forth ideas. It's just let me complain and get everybody upset. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. The Berkeley County Board of Education, do you get involved with curriculum issues at all? Is that decided at the board level? We, um, we will approve uh, certain textbooks, but we don't get involved in the classroom in terms of how you teach our okay. own. Go ahead. No, what's a textbooks is a great example. So what is the metric or the criteria to say you've got two different history books, you've got two different geography books or math books or whatever? The board is not necessarily a room full of educators, right? So what is the what how do you decide this book, not that book? Well, we deter we depend on the staff because they they've already read over them. They've looked at they've had committees. They've had a group of teachers that have all reviewed these books, uh, like a science book or history book, whatever it would be that's going to be used for that. For all those classes so they come before us and say hey this we've we've researched this this will work for what we're trying to teach our students and we'll be we'll have an opportunity to look over it as well but our our main thing is are we going to approve the purchase so because it's, it's monetary so we approve yes you can purchase this book um when we, you purchase a book you're purchasing many yes, copies exactly, of that book right? exactly thousands of dollars to, to purchase just that copy but we we rely on our educators that's they're the ones that are going to be in the classroom teaching this subject will this book provide uh, the best opportunity for our students to learn? I think you should teach political thrillers. Just saying, you know, <laughs> if, if, when it comes time. Any to, particular uh, author in uh, mind? Uh, well, I, ha I have one. I, you know, I don't, we'll talk about that <laughs> off the air. Uh, now, what is the division of labor between the State Board of Education and the various county boards of education? What do you mean in terms of what is what we're allowed to do? I mean, I'm, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't understand. Well, what does the State Board of Education do that the County Board of Education does not do, or vice versa? Uh, they set the, the the policy, the overall policy for um, for the state. You know, what what we what the goals are going to be? Um, like we want this this certain amount of growth. Now we have our own individual uh, objectives, but if the state says, hey, we want um, student math scores to go up by five percent. Well, we can say oh, we can't say oh no, we only want it to be three. No, we have to push for five. Now, if we want it to be six or seven percent growth, that's fine. But they set the overall policy and goals for for a certain in, in certain rules. Um, like, you know, we there's certain things that we can't do as a board. We we're very limited. Like for example, we're not allowed to investigate. If if a parent emails me and says, "Hey, this this is going on in the school. Um, you need to get rid of this teacher." I, I immediately forward that like I can't know this <laughs> because that teacher may come before the board in terms of a discipline and we have to vote on that we're the jury so we can't be biased so oh, who does the investigation then? Uh, the school system does or well if it's a criminal matter then police but, officer yeah, but if it's uh, any other issue then the, the administration does that then it comes before us hey you know this teacher is not really working out we may need to give it to them and then they'll both sides will state their case and it's up to us to make the decision. So if I'm a parent and I <clears throat> just a, a random hypothetical, I, I want either more or less recess time for my kid. And who do I go to with that? Is that to you guys? You go to the, the school, the school itself. So you would go to the principal uh, and, and speak to them. Um, and it matters. You know, what's the reason, you know, and well, we can't let your kid stay out for an extra five minutes when he needs to be in class. <laughs> well, no, 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 I would have to be yeah, perfect. Yeah, so right, so, yeah, so. Can, a, can a principal say, 
I don't know, if recess periods are, are a half hour, I'm making this up, can mm-hmm. that principal say, well, you know what, it's going to be 40 minutes from now on? Well, and make it work. Is that something the individual principal is empowered could, to do, or does that have to go through the board? No, no. They could say, because they have a master. Well, depend on school. They have a, could have a master schedule. So then the, the the schedule could say, hey, listen, we're going to extend PE for this amount of time. Which of course then they'd have to adjust the entire schedule for all the other classes. But if that school feels we need more time for this or that, as long as it fits in, which that can be difficult because every teacher's like, wait, that you're, if you're going to short me time that's going to uh, you know affect my students too so there's certain wiggle room that they can have with the master schedule and to to move things around but it would like i said it would be overall for everybody i find it interesting john that of all the curriculum questions that you could have asked of this board of <laughs> education member you immediately went to your strong suit which was recreation how how could we extend Recreation time at the schools. I have not always sat in a dark room with my imaginary <laughs> friends. <laughs> he now, takes them out to play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could have asked about yeah. math, now, I, I, language skills, well, English, but you went to how do we extend lunchtime? I think that, that one of the, the issues, when it's been a while since I had uh, a kid in, in school, but I think that, especially with boys, I don't, it, they got to they gotta run this stuff out. Burn and, off energy. And, and as... And recess times or PE, not so much PE is a high school thing where I came from. Um, the, the recess times got shorter and shorter and shorter, and that energy doesn't go away. Mm-hmm. You know, it just it gets pent up. So that's yeah. that's where that came that, from. We had, we had an hour when I was in Catholic school. You got a half an hour to eat, and then a half an hour to beat the hell out of each other out in the playground. Yeah, and that's how. And then you went back to the classroom. <laughs> well, you have to leave time for the school nurse to get rid of the bloody nose, and then you go. And the nuns would beat the hell out of you for the next two hours, and then you went home, and then your parents whooped on you, and then you woke up and started the day again the next day, and it just continued on and on and on until you graduated. Yeah, I uh, think David, that's, a, no, that's, a good, that's a very good point that you made about about the exercise because we actually had a teacher come to one of our board meetings and bring that, that point up that we the children need more yes. exercise time. They need, even if it can be incorporated in the classroom, like you're say in English class and you're talking about a play, well you can act something out that gets kids moving mm-hmm. because they need they need to move. It's it's just trying to get that incorporated. But I, I totally agree with you know, math and P were my favorite subjects. Uh, Damon Wright is our guest from the Berkeley County Board of Education. Damon, last week we had the president of the board, Pat Murphy, Vice President Jackie Long in the studio. We got into a discussion about uh, the retention of children who have not effectively uh, satisfied the academic requirements that would typically be associated with promotion to the next grade. Pat said uh, he was in favor of that. Jackie's point was uh, evidence shows that if you hold kids back, they tend to drop out. Uh, where is Damon Wright in regards to the retention of children in, in grade for not completing the academic requirements? I think that we should hold them back, especially at an early age. We need to, to hold them back because that's, when you hold them back at that early age, it's, they've got more time to recover. Um, and they have more time to get the basic skills. Uh, I've had experience with students that um, struggled with reading and other aspects of school. And then what happens is when those students can't read and then they have that pressure from their peers they'll act out they'll be the class clown they'll be the bully they'll do everything they can so they don't have to be embarrassed and then they'll end up in uh, youth facilities and then eventually prison so it it's important for us to get those skills and those students early or else we'll have problems later in society is the third uh, k through third grade uh, aid is that uh, helping can you tell already and and one do you have enough of them yet um we can't tell yet it's going to it's going to take some time since this it's just began um we're waiting on i think we're going to get another report january or february uh, and see maybe how how things are going with the current um assessments that the that the staff are doing uh so we'll know a little bit more then um uh, in terms of that have you been able to hire enough of them actually the 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 problem is that the, uh, we have some cooks and others other needed positions now are going to be aid so then we're, we're then having to fill the other so it's, it's it's good for some of the lower paid staff and a, a special special staff or um, uh, service staff but it, it harms the overall because now we're we're lacking in those areas so it's it's good that we're we're filling them. Um, we could always use more of everything, um, but that's the that's conundrum. When you make a new position like that and it's a higher pay paying job, 
um, when you're making so little, you're, you're going to jump at that opportunity. And then how do you fill the other positions? So it, it's, it's, a, it's very big challenge. So if anybody out there wants to come work for Berkeley County Schools, <laughs> please apply. Uh, there are plenty of opportunities to help our, our young people. And how much control does the local BOE have over the pay scale for custodial staff, cook staff? Zero. And that's something we always try to let people know when, because they're always like, you need to pay them more, pay them more. If I could, I would, but we, we do not have that ability. It's, that's the legislature and the state aid formula. So you can push for them to change the state aid formula. You can push for them to do some type of cost of living adjustment. Um, but these overall pay raises don't really work here for for the for Berkeley County or the Eastern Panhandle. Are year one salaries set irrespective of experience? So if you bring in somebody with custodial experience from a hospital for 10 years and he wants to come and work for the school systems, does that custodian start at the bottom level? That that I don't, I don't know. Okay. But I know for educators, it's it's based on years of what's well, based on your degrees and things like that. But for uh, service personnel, I'm not sure. Damon, final thought is yours. Uh, I guess the, the final thought is, you know, like I said, a, a if you have an opportunity and you know somebody that, that needs employment, send them the Berkeley County Schools way. If they're a bus driver, cook, teacher, whatever. Uh, and also one question I, I wanted to put out there for everybody is, because uh, everybody's talking about comparing public to public uh, employees to private, what do we want public schools to be? Do we want it to be just an avenue for jobs or to have uh, an overall healthy society? Damon, thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Good to see you again. Damon Wright from the Berkeley County Board of Education at 901.